Ever wonder what happens when the country witch crosses paths with a city witch? We did too. Welcome to This Old Witch, an organic podcast radio show that brings together two different perspectives of two different witches from two different environments via the magic of technology. <laughs> well, we are back! <laughs> <laughs> if. Once again, it feels like forever. I think we should start doing this once a week. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, two weeks is enough. So anyway, welcome back to This Old Witch with a special guest. Yes, we have an interesting special guest. Uh, there's a lot probably to talk about, a lot that's going to come up, especially mm, yeah. uh, with witchcraft um, and its definition, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, I mean, go ahead. You introduce him. You've known him probably a little longer oh, than me. <laughs> my glass. To my there favorite Dionysus, Brian Kane. There you go. As I take a sip of that wine, um, he is a remarkable high priest uh, of the old arts and a... Um, reverent towards the goddess. I would say that he is amazing uh, author and high priest and friend and he uh, is co-owner with uh, Christian Day's uh, Omen and Hex both in New Orleans and in Salem Brian K. Yeah, in New Orleans and Salem, he's got they got both of them, and they yes, they, <clears throat> they they run uh, Hex Fest in New Orleans, which just happened, which you were a part of, um, and now the upcoming uh, WitchCon, which we are both a part of, uh, in March. March. Yep. I'm so a lot going on. Plus, he, plus, um, well, I know he well, along with Christian Day is run, runs the um, Festival of the Dead in in Salem. So uh, I'm sure they got their hands full. So I'm kind of glad he's, he was kind of free tonight to be able to join us. <laughs> and now, and now his, his book is now um, being published as a hardcover. Um, yep. And on another thing that they do, Warlock Press, which is their own publishing company. <laughs> uh, so we will definitely be talking about that. And I know a lot of people who are looking forward to this to be able to hear things because I talk about it quite often with people on initiatory witchcraft and the differences and um you know and, and all that and try to correct people with certain things uh so that they get kind of the idea of where it all started and stuff like that so that might come up um and they also have their own podcast as well oh my god i forgot about that brian has his own podcast um which is on the hex education network and it's called covendom uh, you can find that on right. find that on YouTube. With Levi. Does, yes, with Leah Um yeah. It's a really fun, interesting podcast. Um, almost organic, like us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably a little bit more organic uh, than we are. <laughs> probably they, more. They, they they roll off. You know, we have guests. That I think if we didn't have guests, uh, ours would be just as as. Uh, organic as theirs is, and just kind of roll yeah, off. They start with a I topic. I believe that bringing in, you know, the flavors of the community brings spice and uh, informative facts that people would love to know. So yeah, no, I think I, that, I that ours is 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 everyone's different. So ours is a, is is that difference that provides for the community. So yes, he is. Uh, the author of Initiation into Witchcraft, and uh, amazing book, by the way, I have to say. And I, when we have him on board, I would like to talk to him about um, the book itself. <laughs> and now, of <laughs> course, a hardcover, beautifully done. Uh, both Christian and Brian have such phenomenal, stellar taste. So uh, I commend them for that. Yep, yeah, no, should be uh, should be good. So, uh, 
I told him 710. It's 707, but I think we can bring him on because I know he's going to Bring talk. him on board. And I know he's going to talk. And I know, he's re- I know he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to bring him on. Crack that door. Bring him on board into this old witch. Let's see. It's it's calling. I hear him. Let's see if we there can get is. to see him. <laughs> Let me bring him onto the stream. And there he is. Now I can see him. Yeah. How are you, Brian? <laughs> How are you? Good. Got your drink ready? Yes, I have. Oh, there you go. See, we're all we're all ready. My favorite night. <laughs> <Nighty-nighty. laughs> <laughs> so, how are you this lovely evening? Good. Just sort of um, hiding from the heat today. It's got to be over a hundred something degrees here. So even with the full on air conditioning, wow. it's seventy three in here. Wow. Oh, oh, that's tough. And all but I'm thinking, changing. I woke up the other day to my air conditioning not working, so it's working now. So. <laughs> oh, thank the Lord and Lady. Now, I have to warn I you, I do, as, as Alexander knows, I have dogs and I cannot control them. <laughs> it's all good. Just, we'll bring them on board. At any point. <laughs> They're napping currently. That's so good. So we were just talking about your book. Um, and you and all the, all the things you and Christian do together and on your own. And so, I don't know. I'll leave it with Alex to, to kind of start our conversation to start our night. I know yeah. it looks, oh my God, I want it so bad. It I looks amazing. It. <laughs> I love it. The um, hardback's going to look a little bit different than this. This was just the first one that was sent. So the, the rose ink is going to be a little smaller and it's going to be filled in here. And we've reduced this side here. So it's a little different, but basically. Done. Beautifully done. I just, now that I have the opportunity, because there's been, you know, since it first came out, there's such great, there were there was some sort of controversy with your cover on the book. <laughs> with, <laughs> it, it, right, right to the punch. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I wanted this, the, you know, what, what was all, this all about with your cover? Uh, it was, um, I think it was two things. I think one, one, I think the primary thing is because the book said the word initiation on it. I think that's the primary thing that got a lot of people going. Um, and then, of course, the imagery, um, you know, there's a lot of different feelings in the communities um, that we shouldn't be judgmental about people's lifestyles or how they look, yet we are, you know. And so there's, a, you know, there's a lot of people who think that every witch should present themselves in a suit and a tie with no makeup, you know. Um, so actually, when we designed that, um, that cover, um, I was having a bit of a go at people because what I was doing was I was combining two worlds, and I'm sure Cap, I'm sure that Alexander can see that. It's uh, you know blending that sort of Cabot eye stamp in with the Alexandrian white robes, but giving it sort of a, a bit of a Gothic mystique as well. So I was like, I'm going to make white wicked, and it's going to confuse so many people. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if I were to wear a black robe with with makeup, it would be like, oh, why does he have to, you know, why does he have to be gothic? Why does he have to look so spooky? If I would have come in in a clean, white, pristine Alexandrian robe with no makeup, then it would have been like, well, why is he looking so holy? Why does he look like he's in an <laughs> alien? You know, um, there's always the A and naysayers. So, exactly. if you're going to do a cover, you know, you want it to be eye catchy, you want it to catch attention. So, I got more advertising off of that cover than anything. <laughs> and, 
no, no company could have done for me what that cover did. Um, so there were people talking about it in the thousands uh, a year before it ever came out. And it wasn't just um, the magical communities. There, were a lot, there was a lot of Christian hate. And in that case, it was just because it was a weird witchcraft book, I guess, you know. Um, but yeah, so there was a lot of stuff that we got through that. I found it amusing. It goes into the whole idea of don't judge a book by its cover, you know. Oh, wow. um, you know, and so yes, that's been much talked about. Um, I'm not particularly completely happy with the cover because I hated my hair, you know. But <laughs> Very hypocritical. And where we went for the photo shoot, it was a straight man doing the photo shoot and my husband, and that was all that was there. The man had no mirrors anywhere where the photo shoot was taking place, so I was just kind of, you know, stuck with what it is. He's a very good photographer, um, but I don't think used to posing gay men, you know, and there is a difference. So and it sounds strange that there is a difference, but there is. You know, um, we, we get how to pose ourselves most of the times. So when somebody tries to correct us, it's often to try to make us look more masculine, which mm. always makes things awkward. You know, it doesn't work. You know, I had a friend do that where she tried to make me look very masculine. I came out looking like an action figure. It wasn't <laughs> good. <laughs> Brian, um, but I, I have to say that this picture here is phenomenal. I'm you surprised I controversy of that, yes. Um, that was, that was there was my... controversy about that picture, too? Uh, surprised there wasn't, um, but no, there hasn't <laughs> been. Um, no, that uh, was a... Most of the photos in there were sort of tribute photos to older Alexandrian photos. If you go back and you look at um, any of the old Coven's photos that were done, they were all staged, you know, they were not actual rituals taking place, they're staged rituals, and same with ours. Um, we're not going to take pictures of our actual rituals, are we? So there's some truth coming through in a lot of those rituals, and then there's some things in, the, in there that aren't something that we necessarily do. So that was sort of my ode to Alex. I'm wearing, a, um, I'm wearing the Alexandrian crown, that there's been very few of them made, um, but that is what that is, really. And then um, I'm holding the sword like Maxine does in the cover of, you know, so sort of a tribute to both of them in the photo. And of course, there are other photos that didn't make the book. So, yeah. Okay. But that was a phenomenal photo, I love. Well, I do like <laughs> Yes, definitely. No, the, the book, uh, obviously, it is well written and um, endorsed by many. And the book actually is great um, in, for initiatory rights. I think it was it's well deserved to have a book like this out in the market because for those seekers and curious ones that want to know. So the, this is definitely a must, I would say. We didn't really they have a lot current, you know, that's the whole thing is a lot of a, a, a book that we recommend, you know, sort of stop at the early 80s, you know, um, some go into the 90s, but, you know, it's only very recently that we're starting to get some initiate putting out some new material again on the subject of witchcraft. So, you know, it, I think it has, and it's unique, you know, it's not repeating everything all over again. No, it's not thing. repeating exactly. Today, everything is which this, which that, and, um, you know, it's something <laughs> that... <laughs> that was the big challenge in writing a book on witchcraft. You know, what am I going to say that hasn't been said a thousand times, or am I going to say it different? Uh, I think I achieved that, yeah. You have. You have achieved the guidance towards initiatory witchcraft, and, and it, it, it's the whole personification of it. So, so one day, instead of me saying Cunningham-ism, I may be saying... Keynism? No, because I'm about to enter, so I'm not going to be starting some tradition after myself. You know, I, I belong to a global priesthood that's, uh, you know, a part of one of the earliest branches of modern witchcraft with a right of succession. So that's what I'm promoting. We don't need any more traditions. We have enough well, I, already. Not so much on, I, you know, I use the word Cunninghamism um, on any books that were put on, put out, you know, in the 80s. 90s, I even now, <laughs> even now, you know. We should remodel that book's uh, 
Scott Cunningham's guide to appropriating witchcraft through neo-paganism. That's what. So, so I mean, I, you know, I, I've seen your your show, um, which I, I love watching. And you, the two of you are together are like Laverne and Shirley. Oh, phenomenal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I think we struggle with who the nice one is. I think is, it's becoming. <laughs> well, it, it goes back and forth. It, it, it does go back and forth, and it depends on the topic, you know. Yeah. And, and I love it because you're kind of breaking those old barriers. Um, of what witchcraft is and the, its definition and where that definition comes from. Um, I agree with some of your stuff and I disagree with some of it. You know, I've kind of added different thing, different ways of doing it. Um, like I consider Cunninghamism like contemporary witchcraft um, and then traditional witchcraft and then, which is not the traditional witchcraft that you kind of consider traditional witchcraft and then there's initiatory witchcraft and that's how i break it up when i talk with people to kind of for them to understand because everybody lumps everything together if i got a crystal it's witchcraft you know like that's um that's how i break it up to be able to speak with people um i understand your show but i think a lot of people may not on what initiatory witchcraft I, is and I'm what the difference is <laughs> I'm mean, going to interject because one of the things is, you know, with Brian, he's real. And he he's going to be, you know, no nonsense. And he's going to say how it is. So that's one of the things that makes the the show genuine, obviously. And so when you, you're talking about Cunningham, Cunningham, Scott came into, into modern day witchcraft, I think, and commercialized it. Where oh, others... Well, others and it well, and I mean, most people don't realize he was actually an initiate of Wellen, uh, well, the Wellens Coven. Um, so, you know, which didn't come out till much later. So they were, they were friends. You know, he was originally a red-headed Hawaiian shaman. Uh, I like dessert. <laughs> the problem with Scott Cunningham is you're talking about somebody who is representing something that at the time there was very little, um, there weren't as many books out Correct. outside of what was going on with initiates. And he didn't have any formal training. So I suppose it's no different than me sitting here presenting myself as an auto mechanic. I could probably, you know, say what a carburetor is. And if you don't know anything about it, I could probably convince you that I do, um, especially if I've got the backing of, of publication. So, you know, quite frankly, even before I was initiated, when I was very young, I thought that book was garbage. And I still do, though I recognize that it has done good things for some people. And as has been said before, the craft will use anyone to survive. Um, I never look down on other people's practices or beliefs, but I don't think that you should be apologetic of your own. So as you were saying, you've got your own sort of definitions of how you speak about, you know, your practices or the practices of others. So do I. It's the same thing, you know, and I'm confident with those definitions, but I'm capable of understanding other people's definitions and then sometimes i have to adjust depending on the audience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if i'm being interviewed for instance by mtv i'm not going to get into any of this right because it, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to the audience but on a show like covenant the purpose of the show was to represent the um ideas and belief system of what what we're calling initiatory witchcraft and i can I can um, relate to that label, you know, because I don't think you have to necessarily be initiated to practice the religion of witchcraft anymore. Um, however, I do think it greatly changes one's understanding and access to information. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Of course, it depends on what you're initiated into. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would to lead to the conversation that we were having prior to the show. Uh, with uh, that with Alex um, on the variations between Alexandrian and Gardnerian and um, his own uh, with uh, New York Wicca and how they're similar and not similar but there's also differences in the lines along those two so um, you know maybe that maybe you can now pose that question Alex um, you know, about... um, I, I, I primarily, yes, initiatory rites uh, and, you know, our fertility 
cult. I would have to say that that um, there, there has been occasions that uh, a lot of gardenarians won't acknowledge me as a gardenarian, even though back in the 90s, I was elevated by Rhea and her husband. And even she would vouch for me and still they won't, they won't acknowledge me because I am New York Wicca per se, being, being part of the Eddie Bazinski. So it, it, it's just, it's just that I won't fall into that. I don't need, a, need their acknowledgement. I, I think that, that it's about my own growth, my own spiritual growth. And this is what I'm doing and the preservation of the, of the, of the, uh, the gods and the craft. And this is, this is my life. This is my passion. It's not a hobby. It's, you know, even though I'm a frontliner, it's not my hobby. It's, it's my ideology, my, my stand on, on, on belief of, of my existence, my spiritual path. You can call us a religion. Totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a religion, but some will say it's, it's a cult. Because it is a religion. Like, yes, it is a religion. It's federally recognized as a religion. And in many countries, it's recognized Correct. as a religion. Correct. Which takes it out of it, if you really think about it. <laughs> Correct. So uh, that, that's one of the things that like gardenarians won't acknowledge me as a gardenarian. They would, they would say, oh, you're just the offshoot of Eddie Bozinski's New York Wicca, which I'm proudly, you know, my, I never deny my roots, obviously, because now I'm a cabin, but, you know, being, being from the nineties, uh, growing into a modern day witchcraft as, as, uh, in New York here with Lady Rhea, I, I did, I'm, I'm honored. To, to have those building blocks of my spiritual path. And so I don't care about if a gardenarian doesn't want to acknowledge me and doesn't say, oh, he's not a gardenarian. Oh, so be it. That's their 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 choice. I know who I am. And that's what's we important. We have to understand there was a certain period in time in America um, where the gardenarians became... Um, there's a group of gardenarians that became very um, domineering on the scene about what was proper and what was proper pedigree. I don't know. I don't know anything to be honest. I know who obviously who Ed, Eddie Bazinski is. I know who Herman Slater is. I know who Lady Rhea is. Um, but I don't know anything about their lineage. I'm under the impression they were Long Island or maybe Kentucky. I'm not sure. Um, and that we there was some the sort Kentucky, of yes, we I... are the Kentucky. It's it, uh, you, what you're referring to are the hard guards. Well, the Long Island line. line. Yeah, yeah, the Long Island line, which were called the hard guards. They um, still are some. Um, they're going through their own evolution and changes and and struggles within their within their lineage. But they really, um, there was a a pair, uh, Theos and Phoenix, who really became sort of. Um, very domineering, and at the time, the Long Island Line controlled AOL, uh, as far as the craft was concerned. Um, they were the first ones to get on there, so they really um, tried to lord themselves over both the Kentucky Line and the California Line. So you got a lot of um, devalidation. For instance, my Gardnerian upline is California Line. There's a lot of Long Island Gardnerians who do not consider that line valid anymore. You know, and it's all about the same schism. They were doing it back and forth. Um, that argument's kind of been thrown to the wayside now, so they're not <laughs> thinking quite that way anymore. Uh, but I don't know. You know in my mind, and um, as long as the the, li the line of succession goes back to you know goes back to you know Alex or goes back to Gardner or whoever it's you know named after then that's the line of succession. If you're tracing Gardnerian roots, and as long as your line of succession goes back to Gardner, male to female, and you know that, and there's, you know, you've got the, you know who it is, then I think that you're perfectly Gardnerian. Whether you practice that way or not, I don't know either, because that's the other thing, is that people get very confused. Just, um, I think the big difference between Alexandrian and Gardnerian is not anything but philosophy. There is a bit of a difference in practice based on philosophies. So they are different. 
They're not the same. There are different schools of thought within the same religion and within the same lineage, really. Uh, Alex was a gardenarian. There's little doubt about that. But at a certain point in London, they did what, what you guys did in New York, and they said, we're going to be something else. You know, but what makes it very different then is at the time that was going on, no one was saying Gardnerian or Alexandrian for many years. It was just witchcraft. Gardnerians didn't call themselves Gardnerians. Alex didn't call himself Alexandrian. They all called themselves witches. Thank and they you. were from the same Book of Shadows. They were doing the same things. Uh, everyone was just either an initiate of witchcraft or they weren't. There wasn't all this other stuff. Labels began to form and have yeah. continued and flourished. Yes. <laughs> and pedigrees. <laughs> and now we're trying to figure out what language we're all speaking. Um, so, you know, that's the difficulty. Um, I found that, you know, sort of sticking to history, and I'm sorry, he's ticking. He thinks he's seeing a guy. Ticking. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I haven't seen them since uh, outside your house. <laughs> Well, while he goes play, plays with his, uh, as Na think, Natalie said, we're his no. floofer. <laughs> tree wind. Uh, trees, there's wind blowing the trees, so he's thinking yeah. something's moving out. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yes. I mean, is that Tiki? Yeah, this, this is Tiki, who desperately needs a haircut. Yes, hi, Tiki. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a haircut. Um, no, but you, um, you know, you're so correct on that, Brian. Um, it, it's a it's a evolution of sorts with witchcraft and modern day witchcraft. So yes, uh, you know, well, unfortunately, um, we have these these arguments and this and this uh, battle, which is not necessary if everyone could actually play well together. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, like, that that way. Part of the problem there is that idea. It'll never happen, and I don't think it should. You know, um, as you're well aware, witchcraft is really built around um, covens, and it's built around autonomy and secrecy. So we're not really meant to be all bumping together like this. It's, it's not supposed to be happening, and it doesn't work. So I think it's great that we have this communication, we ha can have this discussion, but you're never going to have a world where, like, all the Alexandrians and all the Gardnerians want to circle together and they're all just loving and accepting of each other because we don't agree. And, you know, so we need to be in spaces of like minds, right? It wouldn't work for me to be in a circle with somebody who thinks that, you know, for instance, um, oh, don't want to word it wrong. Very true in Alexandrian craft. We see um, the god and the goddess is essentially equal. You know, male and female is essentially equal, balanced. There are some castes of witchcraft to castrate their priests. You know, it wouldn't work to try to castrate Alexandrian priests very well. You know, most of them are gay anyway. What's the point? So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's okay for us to have differences of opinions and, you know, and it's okay to not consider someone else a witch. You know, you shouldn't say it. There's a difference. You know, it's rude. You know, I'm not going to go up to someone again. I don't think you're a witch. You know, that's just bullying and unnecessary because their definition of what a witch is is different than yours. You know, but it's still okay for you to feel that way, you know, because if you have an idea, for instance, that you can only be a witch if you're a woman, but let's just say that's your belief system. And there probably are people who believe that. Um, right. Many Dianics. <laughs> that's fine. You know, in their system, that's how they believe and they get to have that, they get to have that belief. Um, I think it's about trying to, um, you know, Know, think that we can all get along or that there's this big old pagan community or that somehow someone's going to leverage someone else into believing something like, oh my god, uh, someone actually said he's trying to bring back initiation about my book cover. You know, he's trying oh, to bring okay. back initiation. You know, that was so atypical of the way some people think. 
you know, I'm like, first of all, it never went anywhere. Sorry, you missed that. <laughs> well, that, that's probably it. they felt that they were, you know, uh, devaluized what they believe, you know, because now if initiatory witchcraft comes back in, everything that's not initiatory is not going to be valid, you know. So that may be what what's. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Right. It already isn't to some people, and nothing you say or do is going to change someone's belief system. The only way your belief system changes is if you change, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not because of what someone else says. I try to go by the historic uh, version, and for myself personally, I've come to the belief that, you know, for me, you know, and this isn't me speaking for Alexandrians, this isn't me speaking for anyone, you know, um, I do believe that to be a witchcraft priest or priestess, you have to be initiated. But I think that you can practice the religion of witchcraft without being initiated now. Because I think that our gods can be responsive. I think enough rituals and magic are out there that people are doing it anyway. And guess what? Most of us did. Most of us practiced witchcraft before we were initiated, including me. You know, from 13 to 15, I was doing all kinds of weird stuff. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was still in it. I was still trying to connect to those gods. I was still uh, trying to work the arts magical. So I don't think that the definition of witchcraft for me is initiation. I do, however, have my parameters. A, you have to believe in magic. You know, that's kind of a thing. Uh, I think that you have to have some sort of... Um, moral compass that aligns with the craft. And I think that you have to believe in a god and a goddess. I don't think you can be a witch if you don't believe in the goddess. I think that the misogynistic movement that's happening right now, where they're trying to make it all about the devil again, I've got no problem with the devil. He's ours more than he is theirs. But the devil's married to the goddess, everyone. So, you know, um, you know, when you go to kiss the ass of Satan, don't know if I could say that, you you're, going to find, <laughs> you're going to find the face of Isis. I can't remember who said that. I think it was in one of Dion Fortune's book. Um, but, you know, but the idea of witchcraft being this, you know, dark male deity uh, all of a sudden with no goddess or somehow she's regulated to, you know, the maiden of the moon or something like that. It's totally flying in the face of both ancient and modern history uh, and what's actually happened. You know, and even if you go through the, the lens of the church, originally it was Diana and Herodias and, and all these female figures that were first documented in relation to witchcraft. It wasn't the devil originally. That mm -hmm. started coming up more and more later. And even when that happened, you still had the queen of the fairies and the queen of Elflame or sometimes the devil appearing as a woman. You know, so... Even in that history, it's not really accurate. Even in biblical, but, yeah. Hebrew biblical, uh, you know, literature, we have Lilith, you know what I mean, as being that, you know, consort and evil. However, you can find that your gods, you know, uh, you know, I definitely, you know, I'm a, I hate to say it this way, but I'm definitely kind of a monotheist, you know, I'm not a polytheist. Um, but yet I am, so really I'm a Neoplatonist. But uh, <laughs> changes depending on what magic I'm doing. Um, but overall, you know, I do believe in a god and a goddess, or a goddess and a god. And I think that they've had many, many names, and that's how I work, and it is how Alexandrians and Gardnerians work. That doesn't mean there are not individuals within our traditions that don't um, differ. And I don't know, I'd love to speak to you or Lady Rhea someday more about the Brotherhood of the Wicca. I think you guys called yourself, so that maybe it's just New York Wicca, I don't know. I just don't know much about it, you know, I really don't. Uh, I know what it is. I, I will give you a, a short um, synopsis of it. It's the New York Wicca was founded by Eddie Bezinski because of um, the prejudice towards homosexuality in the early eight, uh, 70s when he got... Um, you know, elevated in Long Island branch uh, through the Kentucky line. And so he then forms as a, as a rebel, he forms New York Wicca, same sex initiates. So that's uh, how he forms it in New York. And it, it, it grew. And now today it is worldwide. It's, it's amazing how, you know, Ireland and then it goes to, 
Eastern Europe, and it's it's all over the place now. You know, New York Wicca, and it's amazing uh, to have that lineage from you know w one that was so uh, prevalent within modern witchcraft in New York in the early '70s with Herman Slater and the Warlock Shop metamorphosizing into uh, later on the the uh, the magical child. So Lady Rhea being the first high priestess uh, and and the the mother of New York Wicca as well. She no. so that's why he has all three traditions: the but the just, New York Welsh traditionalist and the Minoan. Was Herman also in the Gardnerian tradition? Because I thought he might he, be. He was initiated into second degree. I uh, you uh, know what my 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 memory bank serves me is that he was in second degree at the time. Uh, he didn't go further because of the the whole uh, you know anti gay. Gardnerian, you know, they only wanted, uh, they didn't want the same sex. Uh, that's Eddie. Eddie forms the same sex initiatory rites. Uh, hence what it is today, New York Wicca. But even though if I was, if I was initiated by Rhea and her husband back in 95, um, I'm a Gardnerian because of its lineage and then also New York Wicca because of her legacy. Yeah, so, as long as the initiation was done in the Gardnerian way. Correct. And as, as long as there's not a same sex in your lineage, then it, it should be accepted as Gardnerian. Thank you, but they, you tell that to the Gardnerians. Probably because, because they, it's confused. They don't know, you know, uh, when, the problem is that you get the same sex and obviously I'm a homosexualist, as my teacher Val would say, um, <laughs> it, is it, it is not a part of the original system of witchcraft. Um, it, it's very taboo, not because of, um, at least not now in the lens. I'm sure it has fallen into the hands of homophobes, um, but it really has something to do with something else entirely. And it's because you don't, don't need what you already have. You know, and so that's required in a huge part of the system of magic that we do. You know, the system of magic we do would be obsolete without that. So I can understand that being a concern, but you know, maybe they should ask. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Now I'm, I am a Cabot. I am I am of, of a tradition from Salem, Massachusetts. I carry it very well. I I hence my name as Alexander Cabot and I and I you know carry the legacy of Lori Cabot but I I don't deny my roots and being a New Yorker and having New York Wicca and Welsh I am not a Minoan but I am New York Welsh as well through Lady Rhea way back when and so that's something that is is acknowledged as as uh, initiatory right as a bona fide religion let's say or tradition well there are also separate priesthoods so for instance we could use Lori Cabot and as you know you know I'm I'm well acquainted with Lori Cabot um, so um, my husband I used to say he was the dark fringe of Cabot society you know before he became Alexandrian. <laughs> I think I sort of married into it in the sense of that book cover, really. Um, but, uh, you know, Lori, you know, um, she says she was initiated by someone um, from Kent, England. But that aside, you know, because we don't know, you know much about that, you know, the priesthood that traces through Lori Cabot traces to Lori Cabot. And it's its own priesthood. Does it make it the same priesthood as Gardnerian craft? Because that's a separate priesthood. But it has become a priesthood in its own. And who knows in a hundred years, you know, what, you know, will it, anything that continues in my mind, that's where you can find the power, right? So, you know, if the Cabot tradition is here 50 years from now, a hundred years from now, which I expect it might be, then no one will be questioning it, who 
glory came from, any more than they questioned who Gardner came well, from. Or... Well, everything isn't religion man-made, isn't it just our mere interpretation of spirituality? So when it comes to, you know, this, this uh, traditions, Laurie's is, is a, an American-owned tradition. Like I've, I've always professed, and when I go to Brazil and, and I mention, you know, where this tradition comes from, I say, yes, she was led into uh, Felicity, who was the librarian, supposedly, that she claims that she was initiated by, by the Kent witches. And this is how the light of Excalibur is passed on throughout the uh, tradition. And this is what I carry on, being a Cabot witch. And so this is part of American witchcraft, I would say. She is a trailblazer unto herself. So she apparently is, is you know, her own legacy. Well, she wasn't the first witch on TV, Gerald Gardner was, but she was the first one on Oprah. <laughs> and on Joan Rivers. Uh, you know, I think that what Roy Kravitz practicing is, you know, I can view that as religion of witchcraft because it, it fits my bells and whistles of the religion of witchcraft. Her priesthood is not connected to my priesthood. Um, that's fine. You know, there are going to be separate priesthoods. You know, I don't mind that. You know, and nobody's trying to connect the two. I'm not saying that, obviously. Um, but that's the point, is that it's okay for us to be different. It's okay for us to Absolutely. say, this is what a Cabot believes, this is what a Cabot comes from. But I think people want to squish the label of witchcraft together and say, you know, like, we're all the same thing. Well, no, we're not. You know, we're just not. Um, it, it means different things. Kind of like Christianity means different things now, right? So... You know, it is what it is. That's why we have these labels as much as we wish Even we could do. Even the umbrella it. of Protestants. How yeah. much, yeah. how many denominations under the umbrella of Protestants? You know, and, and then Catholicism. So, it's it's so many. It's, it's man-made. And this is well, something that we need. It's about humanity. And this is I'll something that we have to be tolerant. I'll, I'll differ with you on this just a little bit. I do think that there is, um, and this is the witch coming out in me, right? Okay. So I think that it's really important to remember that, that we are not just making this up as we go along. We are making real contact. And when that contact is real, a priesthood, for instance, whether it's the Cabot priesthood or the Gardnerian priesthood, a priesthood is only going to last if there's something behind it. It is not going to last just because some blow Joe came along and made it, right? It's going to have to have something that works for people, that people believe in, that's going to be carried on from generation to generation. You know, whether we like it or not, there's power in the Catholic Church. Look how long it's gone on. Granted, it has a machine behind it. Witchcraft doesn't have that machine behind it. So it really relies strictly on power. The reason why I know that Gardner and Alexandrian craft made genuine contact and why I suspect perhaps the Cabot tradition will follow suit someday is the length of time that it's lived, mm -hmm. gone on past. The people who started it are all dead practically. You know, we've got Patricia and we've got Maxine. The rest of them are all dead. Yet it's alive throughout the world with just as much passion, if not more so, than the original content. You know, so it's not going anywhere. And it created everything else you know like like it or not without Gerald Gardner none of us would be having this conversation including Laurie Cabot you know he <laughs> that is correct. started the conversation and so why did that conversation work because there's real power behind it it's the same reason why I believe in Leland's work his original charge of the goddess even though it's been reworked uh, by other traditions that poem went from an obscure piece of folklore to being part of several casts of a world religion right. because it had real power genuine the gods were on the other side of it i think yes you're right about it being man-made in the sense it's our artistic interpretation but i do think when there is real content <laughs> power behind it 
And when it comes to witchcraft, if there's not power, there is nothing. Well, it's our magic. Yes. <laughs> and unfertile magic is just not very good, is it? <laughs> 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 yeah, but that, that's where a lot of people separate the spirituality and religion thing. Um, I think there's there's a kind of a big separation that's going on. You know, you, witches are more spiritual than they are religious. And I don't like the word spiritualist because it just sounds like weakness. You know, and maybe that's my Alexandrian Sith Lord kind I, of thing. I think so <laughs> Spiritualism is everything. It's a primordial force that lives in us it's all. It's pretty sounding, you know. Uh, it's, there's a there's a YouTube show. I'm gonna get probably get it wrong. Uh, sp I think it's called Spiritual Guy. It's a comedy skit, and it's how spiritual he is, you know. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it really comes from the New Age, and it's you know I think that people, especially in America, you know, we've got a lot of different hang-ups in America than they might in Europe. Um, and relig the word religion reminds a lot of us of Christianity and somebody lording themselves over us. And so, you know, there's a rebellion against that, you know, and that even comes across with witchcraft. I don't need a coven. I don't need initiation. I can do this on my own. You know, it's this rebellion against that patriarchal thing. And there's a beauty in that. Uh, however, you know, saying, uh, taking the word religion away from witchcraft lowers you know, lowers its uh, prominence. Just like calling the god and the goddess, you know, anything other than a god and a goddess, you know, or not allowing the goddess to be monotheistic. You know, like, she has to be polytheistic. There's lots of goddesses. Can't be just one goddess. Well, there can be one god all over the world. Why can't there be one goddess? There's historical precedence for this, you know, in the cults of Isis. So, in other words, yeah, it's Tiki. It's the tree, sorry. Um, I, I think that, uh, pow, you know, that's one of the things I think that we often forget about in our modern conversation is that we are magical people. You know, we're miracle makers. We're doing crazy stuff that most human beings think is something only nut jobs would do. You know, we're playing with the universe. We're stealing fire from heaven, all that good stuff. So be that. You know, whatever you're doing, uh, jump in with both feet. You know, um, I think that it's okay to be devoted. I think it's okay to be serious. You know, I'm glad we get to have fun. You know, I'm glad that we we aren't trying to lord ourselves. You know, that's what I mean about the ethical compass of witchcraft. You know, I think you have to have that, even if you're more so if you're an initiate of anything. Really, you've got to have a moral compass if you're going to be in a community. If your community doesn't have a moral compass, it's not going to be healthy. Do you think that that that's kind of um, separating the the pagan community um, now that there's so many too many morals, too many people trying to the problem, convert the uh, witchcraft is one huge big umbrella term as we've been discussing tonight, right? Like you could be a Satanist and call yourself a witch. You could be uh, you could be this crazy lady that lives in her basement talks to fairies and worships a Christmas tree and call yourself a witch and nobody can come to us. Like, <laughs> so we've got this like whole thing there. Pagan's even bigger. You know, you can be a polytheistic white supremacist Nazi and you still fall under the pagan tree if you worship Odin, which has zero to do with like the goddess worshiping movement that mm. also identifies with being pagan or a druid reconstruction group who's into environmentalism. I mean, they're just so vastly different. You're talking about, you know, whenever you take a group of spiritual people and you put them together and they're practicing one thing, that, my friends, is religion. So you're talking about a lot of different religions or small subcults, you know, that are just simply not having the same belief system, you know? And so I think the problem is, is that we try to tread this illusion that we do. And if anyone steps out of line and sort of says, well, I actually believe differently than all of you, then somehow it's like triggering or, you know, mm -hmm. just, or, you know, or you're lording yourself over or whatever. It's just not realistic. You know, I think that the communication needs to be that saying you're a witch or saying you're a pagan now really means very little. 
it doesn't really mean anything at all. You know, the only difference is which sort of implies that you practice magic, and pagan sort of implies you're not Christian. <laughs> that's really it. So as labels, they don't really mean a whole lot. So that's why I think there's no cohesive community, because it doesn't, there's no language. You know, I, I prefer trying to either focus on the magical occult community or the witchcraft community, because I don't really have anything in common with an Odinist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other than the fact that, you know, we're not Christians, but either is a Buddhist. Right. So. Right. No, that's very <laughs> true. Don't that's they very fall true. under the umbrella of paganism? To some people, they would, yeah. They wouldn't identify themselves, though. I don't identify as a pagan. At no time did the Alexandrian tradition identify as pagans. It's never no, been a thing. But, but now, in order to label and, and to compartmentalize, they have now the, the umbrella of paganism and all the different um, religions. Well, my other people, we constantly reject it. Uh, I walked in a newspaper, like if, if the newspaper or television or something came along, I wouldn't bother with the conversation once again, because it's like a waste of time, right? At that point, you're just trying to get them to understand you don't stab children, cats, or worship oh, the I devil. Know. Yes. Well, that, that's a completely different community, you know, because yeah. if, you, if you look at, um, you know, you look at the pagan community as a whole, uh, no matter where you go, you could go to, and we, we just did Philadelphia Pagan Pride today, um, online, of course, um, you know, you could take that group and then take the group from Florida and the people are exactly the same and they're all either for or against the same exact things, but yet the things that they're against are the things that really got them together in the first place. So like it, it there's, there's like this barrier. It's of, try and going to keep trying. I'm not saying they shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems I'm like there's saying... a barrier. Uh, yeah, it's called belief systems being different or, you know, people get really, you know, we get really um, insecure um, especially if you've come from any sort of religious trauma that someone's going to hurt the thing you care about or try to use what you care about to hurt you, you know, and it doesn't really belong in my nucleus because I work in a cloistered coven system. So outside of things like this or other cloistered covens I occasionally work with, I really don't have an interaction with any other kind of group. I don't go to pagan events really. Um, unless I'm hosting something, which we prefer to use magical. Every Alexandrian elder I've ever met, including Maxine, if called a pagan, will always say the same thing. I am not a pagan. And here's why. So witchcraft, if you want to be historical about it, even modern witchcraft or witchcraft is a historic word, doesn't actually exist outside the nucleus of Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. a pre-Christian mm -hmm. word. It's not a pre-Christian uh, belief system. You know, people have tried to play with it. I get that. I talk about it in my book. There's a possibility that the word has roots that were used by pre-Christians, but things become vague because a lot of our history has been lost. But as, you know, the modern English word witch or the old English word witch, we know, which is witcha, wicca, witcha, um, is old English for witch those existed within Christianity. We don't know really what went on before that too much, other than the Germanic, which is still vague. Um, so that being said, we, as a modern movement, also came around within Christianity. You know, Gerald Gardner, all of us, we're in a Christian society. You know, there are places in the world that aren't. We just don't live there. We live in a Christian society. Like, there's just no getting around it. It's on our dollar bills, right? So... You can't remove yourself from that culture completely, no matter how hard you try. And I'm not trying to be a Celt. I'm not trying to be an Egyptian. I try really hard sometimes, <laughs> but I'm not trying to be an Egyptian or a Viking. I'm not trying to reconstruct some pre-Christian culture of people um, that I'm trying to pretend I'm living as now. I, I, be I belong to a mystery cult of the goddess that exists in modern Western civilization within a Christian society. 
So I, I understand I have not completely escaped that paradigm, and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm not anti-Christian either. I just don't happen to embrace their philosophy. So being a part of the pagan community tends to be either like counterculture politics now or or trying to promote some sort of idea that we're all an earth-based religion when most of the people involved really aren't you know they're trying to be a viking or a druid or come on we've all met them right we're heathens you know we worship the old heathen gods this is what it really consists of so it's really just a label term and people you know go to parks and they have events or they go to fairs and they have events or they get online and they have a thousand different groups. That's the pagan community. You know, there's not like something else. Like, let's just be real. You know, it doesn't exist. And a lot of them don't like witches, and they certainly don't like initiatory witches. And quite frankly, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> but yeah, commend you for trying. <laughs> I'm not pagan either. I've met lots of pagans that I really like. I just am not a pagan, really. Now, under a certain conversation, um, I'm not going to drop that. You know, in an anthropological sense, I'm sort of pagan, I guess. You know, even though I live in 2020, I'm not Christian, which is an, an ecclesiastic definition. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that sense, I'm, you know, a heretic or <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Even even pagan, even the word pagan, that's a Christian word in a way. Um, it's a Latin word, you, you and know, it, but... it, the Romans, the Romans are actually pagani, and it's just rural people. But and the, so, did, that, but, the, but the, identify, the connotation behind the word that eventually well, got it was used to identify and, that right. they were folk people with their folk uh, superstitions, let's say, or or, or beliefs. That's just an identification that the Romans at the time, you know, I mean, had for them. Pagani. Like peasants that weren't Romans. That's, you know, that's <laughs> yeah, but there were, there were a lot of them. Civilized people, tribal people, probably, um, or the remnants of tribes they'd walked through, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's none of it's wrong. Whatever you guys, you know, you it's guys are. It's part of humanity. Wrong. It's yes. part of the evolution of humanity. So it's something that we. You know, I mean, I particularly individualistically, I embrace. I think that that it's wonderful. You know, if, if, if you if you agree or disagree, that's your prerogative. But it's more for me about just... choosing what labels that I use for myself. You know, so I can speak about a tradition, and then I can speak for myself. If somebody calls me a pagan, I'll correct them because I don't really identify that way, but only in proper company. Like, sure. I would correct mm -hmm. you, I would correct somebody who has no idea what I'm talking about. I <laughs> prefer the word priest, initiate, which... Well, or you and I are the s similar in, in our, our ideology and praxis. So I think that, that you and I understand each other very well, but, you know. But I think that, that yes, um, the label pagan or, or I don't, I really don't, consider myself pagan because I'm not part of that community, but I'm a witch. I'm, I'm part of the metaphysical world. Uh, that's more like, you know, when people say, oh, you know, why do you identify? I, I'm more mystic. I think I, you know, and being a priest of the God. Spiritual. Mystic is, way mystic is way better than the word spiritual. I think that's yeah. a way better. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I identify more with m being a mystic and being a practitioner of the goddess, let's say, a, a female divinity. So when I when they t ask me, I said I have more reverence towards female divinity. I think I, I go back to the matri matriarchal society that we had once ago, rather than the patriarchal that we live in now. Well, you, you know, like the word, the word witch itself, you know, I... I Whatever I do, I capitalize it. I view it as a title, like a doctor. Um, we put a lot of work into what we do. It is our our practice. It is, you know, it is who we are. It is what we do. Um, I think that's what makes the difference. You know, like 
in my head when I'm speaking to people, when they're like, oh, I'm a witch, are you a lowercase witch or are you an uppercase witch? You know, what <laughs> what constitutes the difference? Because I heard someone what else the hell say is that. that. Somebody came on, uh, I think it was on um, the the thing that you and I were on for New York. Lady, not Lady Rhea's thing, but um, uh, Star Wars. Yes, somebody came on there and she said, I'm a witch, but not a uppercase witch, a lowercase really? witch. Really? And, I, See, what... and I, I say that in my head. <laughs> I was what like, is what is that? I don't know. This must be something on, that, on TikTok we're missing. No, I don't know. Like, I, I've been, I, you know, I, I, that's something that I, I've said over the years, um, you know, that I capitalize which for that reason, because I, I view it as, you know, a title just as a doctor or anything like that. Um, you know, in my head, I say, you know, when people are talking, well, I wonder if they're, you know, uh, a witch with a lowercase or an uppercase, because you could say you're a witch, but are you practicing? Is it part of your religion? Do you do this every day? Yeah. Is this, yeah. you know, um, yes, for, for us, of course, that's the first thing that I do with them. First thing I get up. You know, first thing I go to before I go to bed, like it's it's who I am. It's what I do. Um, not to say that just because, you know, you may not get up like I do and I have to deal with my ancestors and I got to deal with my gods and my goddesses and, and, you know, all the things that I work with and, and all, you know, the whole charade of people and things that are behind me. But and not saying that everybody does this, but if you're doing like the occasional, oh, I'm going to do a full moon tonight and put some water out. Does that really constitute you as making you, making you a witch? You, it's not a religion for I you. It's something about that that's very naughty. Uh, <laughs> I don't post a lot of things online because I just would probably get myself in trouble all the time. But I want to point <laughs> something out to everyone. All water has been in the moonlight already at some Thank point. Thank you. Thank you. you know. <laughs> like it's all been in the moon. It's all been Thank there. You. It's water. Yes, thank you. Actually, uh, what was it? I think two sh two shows ago, maybe when Samuel Weiss was on, um, Alex had gone off because he had to leave early. And I, w I started doing this um, thing that I had done with my old podcast was What Grinds My Stones. And it was like typical things that were going on out in, you know, in the community. And Moon Water was the one. And I put it out. I'm like, what I is this? this mind, just, what is this my, thing? My sarcastic side of myself. Uh you know, I mean, I gave ways for people to make water and things like that in my book, too, as alternatives, um, because you have to give people something to do. You know, um, <laughs> people expect, you know, we can't talk about witchcraft or teach witchcraft and like not give people any magic. Like, that's just not appealing. You know, I wouldn't have liked that, nor would anyone else. So um, but that's one of the things I like about being an occultist is that. They're separate things, but they're similar. Like I have magical practices that are quite outside of the craft, you know. However, they are complementary because it's still the art magical. But yeah, I think moon water just, you know, put it in the under the moon. It's like, well, you do know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, you know. It's just sort of like no, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's, it's something that is symbolic, it's individualistically. Yeah, it's, a thing. it's become a bit corny, and right. it actually had more. <laughs> I believe it has its origins with this early goddess movement um, that I knew a lot of women who were a part of, um, and they called them, it, they called it moon water. It had a lot to do with your menstrual blood and things like that. I'm sure you ran across it at some point in your thing. It was a trend for a while, and um, yeah, moon water was the big thing. Oh, make your moon water, and then they put jars and stick it on their window sills. I think that. I mean, the the, the 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 idea of it is is really old i mean to be able to harness that energy sure. into the moon you you know use it within spells and using this but you know and my thing was is that people are doing this every full moon how much moon water do you need i mean what are you doing with this <laughs> you know i think bathing. I guess I think bathing in it. <laughs> is that they're acknowledging the moon i mean there's the positive side of it i think that it has its people... positive sides of course yeah. in, in a lot of ways uh witchcraft um, my vein of witchcraft is a, you know, it's a fertility cult, it's a mystery tradition, but it's also a lunar cult. You know, the moon certainly plays its role. So, um, you know, it's nice that they're acknowledging the moon, I guess. Yeah. And you're right, it does actually go back to a really old thing. Uh, bodies of water with uh, the moon. Um, I got to visit 
before Corona World and before Egypt, I got to go to stay at um, Nemi, which is a place uh, ooh, about 50 miles outside of Rome that was the supposed birthplace of Diana. And it's got a lake called the Mirror of Diana. It's a perfectly round lake. And on the oh, summer solstice, the moon is directly overhead and shines on the lake and it radiates across the forest. And Diana has been worshipped there since pre, you know, since probably a tr you know, Etruscan times, uh, Etruscan. Um, so yeah, pretty cool place. Um, and we've got lots of things with the Greeks and mirrors and um, a lot of Celtic circles. They've actually found Celtic circles, not just British circles, but actually ones they know, you know, not Stonehenge, ones they know the Celts made. Uh, were often aligned to the moon, and they would find fragments of quartz crystals that had nothing to do with the rocks that were there to build the circle, but actual quartz crystals that were used in some kind of ritual, probably. And I suspect it was to catch the light of the moon, because those stone circles are often correlated to the moon, not the sun. Mm -hmm. So, Or I read that somewhere once. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I I think uh, but going back that that go ahead and goes back to the, the the witch capital not capital you know yes all right you're honoring you're no, showing reverence <laughs> to the moon um, yeah. you know by by collecting your moon water that that shows something I I can agree with that I can respect that um, it it's just does that make it a religion or does that make it a spirituality? You know, is that something, well, that, you know, religious that, has a practice, you know? Yeah. Um, a religion, you know, obviously has to have a, a divinity involved in it. You know, you've got to have God or goddess or both or gods and goddesses. You know, that's really where the buck stops is that it's about uh, the divine and that there's something built around that. You know, I think we try to bridge our idea of religion based on orthodox religions um, that exist now, you know, and you'll hear that often said about, well, witchcraft isn't a religion because it doesn't have any liturgy. And I'm like, well, I have liturgy. <laughs> <laughs> Shadows had it for almost a hundred years now. Um, you know, there are there are things, but even if you go to a small tribal community that doesn't know how to read or write and you know they're worshiping their gods and they have a belief system and a religion you know it's a religion it's a religion mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. religion doesn't have to be big to be real you know i think spirituality is something that is just you you know because that's probably the difference and why people feel more comfortable with that is because when you say you're if you say i'm a part of the religion of witchcraft you're giving away some of that ownership to the i to the to the rationale that some of the concepts surrounding that religion are not of your own making, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's nothing that the modern craft loves more than making it up as they go along, you know, and pe some people are very comfortable with that. And if you call it spirituality, I, I suppose it, it keeps you within that comfort zone. You know, oh, I prefer oh. being a part of something that has a bit more, you know, I like other you know, I don't, you know, I do have my practices that are just mine, you know, occult practices that I do on my own, sometimes share with people. Um, I think we all have that, but my witchcraft is always really community based. You know, it's not, it's not a private thing uh, and it requires other, you know, and that's the big thing that we talk about a lot is other is very necessary. You've got the divine within you, but you still require the divine and the divine requires you. You know, and what I love about witchcraft is the fact that the, the balance is about other and it is about love, you know, because the reason you desire the other is love and you desire the reflection of yourself, not your own mere image. That's called narcissism, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which I have plenty of. But I <laughs> myself, but, you know, I already have that, right? So um, I think that that's, that's a part of what we do and what we're talking about. Um, but for some people, you know, I think, yeah, it's just about, you know, there's a lot of spiritual abuse that's gone on in the world, you know, and so we have to be sensitive to that. But at the same time, I don't think you should have to be apologetic. Like, 
not only is it impossible nowadays, if you tried to walk around um, guarding everyone's feelings, it would be a full-time job and you'd still fail. You know, it's not possible. So I, my remedy to this, and hopefully it works, is just to be completely honest and say that this is my tradition's opinion or this is my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, and just leave it at that. Well, like, I think never... adding, adding in historical to that too, um, to help educate, you know, to at least yeah. help educate because I think, you know, and it's not to sway. And I think a lot of people misunderstand when you're educating, you're not swaying them there from their beliefs. You're not swaying them from what they were taught or what you're just educating them. Like, okay, well, yes, you practice this or you were told this, but this is the his history that we do have. Um, take it as you will, maybe mix it in, who knows? Do what you got to do. But I think that's something that's lacking um, as well, which is what me and Alex talk about a couple of times on the show. And what we try to do is to use it as an education uh, program, really, and, and give people an idea of where things are coming from, from different viewpoints. You know, so, you, you know, this is my, my viewpoint. I live in a nice little country. If you can see the, 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 the feed, I have a nice little country cottage next on my side of the screen, and he's got the city side. Even though we practice very similar, a lot of our background is very similar, we, our everyday practices are completely different, where he has to run to the store to go get something. I can go right outside my backyard. You know, so right there are even our ways of doing the same exact thing are completely different. I suspect he hasn't delivered. I don't think he goes. To <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, you know, I want to make this clear to people that don't understand that witchcraft, uh, we do not proselytize. We we let seekers come in like uh, like christianity you you know they do try to convert uh they try to spread the word of jesus or whatever but when it comes to uh, witchcraft you know we we let those that are like-minded and we we let them in and and we educate we guide them sometimes we, we let them like <laughs> so sometimes we let them go. So, <laughs> back job, out. But um, no, it's 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 about humanity, about our interpretation of of spirituality as human beings, and so this is this this witchcraft being a very old praxis, way back to the Celts way back when when you know your humanity uh, you know was growing i i would say that this is something that that is beautiful that we able to share this on on this program you know and have brian who is a true a, a true priest of the goddess someone who actually delivers the the uh, the essence of female divinity and this is this is something that I'm I'm happy to have him on, on board within this program. Well, I think that that's you know me and Levi agree on that point a lot. Um, obviously, you know, we do believe in gods, and we have our own gods. Um, I think we're actually a bit more selfish about him. Um, he doesn't like other people. He only likes us. Um, but the goddess, <laughs> the goddess is for everyone. She is the goddess of the entire universe, the goddess of the earth, and she loves all life. And humanity has been robbed from from her for so long. And she, you know, historically was the emblem of magic, you know, the cosmic witch. And we don't, in our Western civilization, we don't quite realize, well, first of all, we don't realize that, some people don't realize that witchcraft is the only uh, priesthood of the goddess in the West. Um, and it's the first one to come out, and it's the only one that really exists with any strength now. Um, obviously, there are priesthoods in the Hindu culture and things like that um, that, that do exist. Um, there are places in this world where women still don't have rights. There are places in this world where female circumcision is still forced on, on um, young girls. So this world is very much still in the hands of dark patriarchy and um, 
I think that that is a banner that I'm more than happy to wave and to light that candle, you know, if any, I think that's what we do as witches. We don't proselytize. Some of us say we're here and this is what we're doing and we let the light shine. And, you know, some come to it like a moth to a flame. Some of them die in that flame. But, you know, it's it certainly is not our way to convert people. However, I do like to educate people about, I think right now it's extremely important and we have to remind people uh, about the goddess. I don't know about you lads, but I've experienced a, um, awakening that that conversation really isn't happening that much anymore. If you go on to most things about witchcraft, you'll very seldom hear anything about the goddess at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's another way to light a candle, another way to hurt someone, another way to use a dead animal or the devil. Well, yeah, that, that could be societal too, though, because, okay. you know, people want change. They want change, it's and that's the way to... Right. It's called misogyny. <laughs> people want answers. <laughs> That's, that's right. the real cause of it. Well, people you know, want answers. People want it, and they want it like that. Of their of their being, they you know, and this is is about spirituality. So hence the interpretation that we have so many religions out there within different cultures. Okay, so within America, let's say the Cabot tradition that I'm part of that is comes its roots are from england it come you know it it the initiatory rights like um brian and i and yourself that are part of that witchcraft existence that we have today and we were able to be there as role models and i think to guide i am no more nor less I am here to represent the goddess and to guide those that are seeking. And and that's all I could say. Right. What I think Brian is saying, though, is like if you look at the broader community and you know, groups and Facebook and social media and all this other bullshit, you or it is all about the magic or the magic mm -hmm. and being able to do the you know put the, do these spells can i i need i need my boyfriend left me i need a candle what candle do i use oh this now uh, you know you to light a candle yeah you know, it's, <laughs> uh, to where i detest candle magic you know it's just um you know uh yeah it's it's it is partially people seeking for power in a place in a world where they feel powerless yeah. and you'll even yeah. find those few people that do talk about goddesses it's often spookier goddesses that are popular because once again it's a trend for um power you know and um people are forgetting that love is the greatest power of all thank you, know? you. if you don't want to piss a goddess off i'll tell you what don't piss aphrodite off <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a human being you should know that so um, and we will yeah. be celebrating See, but, but that's... Her tomorrow that's about education you know it's about education you know and that's what i think you know with our show uh with your show um it's really being able to put that out there and kind of viewing it that it's more than just lighting that candle there's a lot more involved that makes it work than just getting going to the store getting a pink candle lighting it and getting your boyfriend back there's more involved in that or or even or even utilizing say you know Aphrodite you know bring my boyfriend back there's more to it than just that that's what's missing that's what's not out there and i think having shows like ours having shows like yours where you're introducing more substance to the magic that's already out there well, what part of the problem is that our our current community, you know, doesn't really know where their definitions come from, you know, and obviously we're talking about, you know, historically speaking, we can't really speak too much about the word witch as pre-Christian because we don't have that information. But we can talk about what the word witch meant within Christianity, and it was always given a religious context, whether it was worshipping the goddess Diana or the devil. 
you were not tried as a heretic by the church for practicing the art of magic. That might have got you put in the stocks. That might have gotten you a fine. You know, in some places it might got you some more severe punishment. But it was the act of heresy or going against God and committing yourself to some infernal pact or some pagan pact, depending on the time period. So it was literally always viewed as something, a religion outside of Christianity, even if it was devil worship. It was never just magic. So the definition uh, that a lot of people are going by, that really started to emerge in the 1930s through British colonialism, because at that time, the British Empire was the largest empire that the world has ever seen. And people don't really realize that it wasn't the Roman Empire, it wasn't Genghis Khan, it was the Queen of England, you know, Victoria, who really held the last, you know, huge empire. And they controlled most of what was going on scientifically throughout the world, including archaeology and anthropology. You know, uh, Egypt was a part of the British Empire. And at that time, they were going around the world using their language to describe whatever was going on. So if you had a man in a hut doing some sort of magic, he's a witch doctor. He's practicing witchcraft. So spell work being considered witchcraft really comes from the 1930s from Christian anthropological colonialism. Now, what we are stuck with today is that there are some places that did embrace that uh, colonialism. For instance, uh, Cuba is a good example. You know, they they were told that their practices was, were witchcraft. So some people within that may still choose to use that word. And in that sense, we kind of got to go, okay, that's part of your history and they're doing that. You know, um, but that's where it comes from. It's an English word. The word witch does not belong in any culture other than English. It never right. has. Mm -hmm. you know, to, to the British Isles. Yeah. Correct. But it's it really is a product of colonialism as to why it's a universal word and why it's used now in the dictionary the way it is. And the reason it's used by modern practitioners don't realize they're following the footsteps of some Christian crazy English guy running around the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. well some, some would beg to differ because they, historically, the Spanish Empire was the largest, considering the English, but the English were renowned, you know, throughout the world as I'll well. I'll tell you right now, look it up, because I'm talking about the modern British Empire. I'm not talking oh, about the, the yes, the ancient, modern, yes. Yes, the modern British Empire is the largest empire the world has ever seen before it was done away with. Um, internally in fact really right partially because of it um but if you look that up uh, yeah in the 1930s they had a lot more power than spain you know back back way when no but yes well 1930s yes but but you know when it comes to south america that was a whole continent in, in itself oh, yeah yeah uh cuba however and i can't be a i cannot be an expert on cuba but i believe you're part cuban aren't you I am full Cuban. <laughs> I was oh, born there. Sorry. <laughs> um, keeping that as an example, and I'm speaking a little bit naively about that subject, but I do believe that there are some practices within Cuba that are not European witchcraft that may still use the word witchcraft because of colonialism. Well, thank you for saying that because a lot of people, a lot of the other Caribbean nations, they try to own to certain. Um, the diaspora religion that was brought, you know, with the African slaves. And, you know, when it comes to uh, Santeria, which is a modern term, obviously, it's Yoruba with the Obi uh, leadership in that in di diaspora. So you, you have, you have its, um, it was, it was, labeled witchcraft but that that that's wrong because it's it, it is its own mysticism and its own own cult mm -hmm. it it is hard witchcraft is british it belongs to the british isles and that's something that i always try to profess and to differentiate 
from people. Yes, it is part of the magic. It's part of the, the system or the praxis of, of um, it, magic, but it's, it's totally different. But even in a lot of the ATRs, the word witchcraft is used in a negative sense. Somebody is putting witchcraft on you, even though the I think practice, today, even in Africa. Well, no, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Even in it, Africa it's, today, but, they use but, witch, yeah, and they they behead and and they. But that's they, because they of colonialism, women. like Brian said. That's because of the colonialism, like that. It's got this negative connotation that comes along with it in these other countries and in these other practices, even though what they're doing, which is connected with Catholicism in most cases, especially with the ATRs, what they're doing, it could be umbrellaed under what we consider witchcraft. You know, even though the word, you know, right here in America, a lot of native tribes um, consider the word witchcraft. When I was going through a lot of the practices that I've learned, um, I could not use the word witch. It is a negative word because it's a negative word in the Bible and a lot of uh, tribal teachings now focus around the teachings of the Bible that change the words and, and things like and that. The and, perversion, right. the perversion but it's of centuries, yes, of centuries of, right. of, of Christianity. It's been perversed. Right. So, but the Spanish term bruja or brujo in also in pro Portuguese, bruja, Obrujo, it, it is part of the existence of the mystic, the, the, the right. you know, mysticism. It doesn't have the, like we, we consider it here, you know, if somebody says bruja or brujo or whatever, we can, we connect that with witch now. It doesn't mean witch Definitely traditionally, does. you know, that's, and that's what Brian is saying. It, it definition is witch. It, it has been said from from yeah. from um, Castellano, which is Spanish to English, would be which Spanish but to English. Us, you got that colonialism yeah. right back there, though. No, well, but some, us, some us. translates don't translate correctly. You know, you've got. Um, I am not. I mean, Levi was a part of this conversation. He's really good at that because he's a language teacher, right? He scares me he, when I listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> a lot on him for that sort of thing but um he speaks fluently seven language and is like learning a few more as we speak but um it not everything translates properly right. you know and we are often using english within because english is the dominant language on this planet still like most countries learn english we don't learn there's no language we're forced to learn but most countries learn english so, you know, it's, it's still a thing. Uh, we are sort of the blueprint for how things are translated quite often, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't always work. You know, there's a, a language um, scholar who once said to translate is treason because it just doesn't always translate right. Um, yeah, Christian and I have this debate all the time. I don't think anyone will ever win, um, you know, about, you know, whether or not these things really are the same. I guess the question comes down to, you know, um, is, is what a bruja doing the same thing as what I'm doing? No. You know, whether it's in an ancient context or a modern one, if it's not, then they're not the same thing. Yeah. I, I, no, it's not. It's, it's different. It's different tradition. It's a different culture. And but like, the foundations. Like in Hinduism. But the foundations. Yeah. It but the, the foundations are the same. The foundations are the same. Well, Over, no matter yes, what culture correct. you go to, there is some kind of form of goddess worship. I, and I say this all the time. I don't care if you call it Diana. I don't care if you call it Hecate. I don't care if you call it Shamalama Ding Dong. It doesn't matter. It's still a goddess energy. It's still a goddess focus. I think that so the foundations are there. And it works magic, um, and it has some sort of ethic, ethical cast. Then I suppose I'd be forced to agree. I don't always find that to be the case, though. You know, and I don't claim to know about a lot of practices, but some of you know, living in New Orleans, you do get exposed to some other uh, ethnic practices. And yeah, but a lot of, of a lot of ethic, a lot of ethics come from 
uh, the social areas and the demographics and you know th there's a lot involved what's okay for you to do in new orleans may not be okay to do right here in pennsylvania you know um so it really depends on that but when you scrape all of that away those are all social things when you scrape that away the basic foundations there is a male and female type of balance which is found throughout almost every culture you most know, you... ATRs don't have that you know i've got a very good friend who's a, a voodoo priest i guess you know their version of a high priest i can't usually get their words down right oh, um, yeah um, and some other practices some things i don't want to say because they're too dark but there are some very cruel inhumane practices that go on and for instance in voodoo they don't have any goddesses at all you know they've got uh, one divine spirit and they have the lawa they're spirits they're not mm -hmm. gods right. Um, right nothing in common at all really uh, other than it's an obscure thing and that we might in some way practice some form of magic uh palo is another one nothing in common mm -hmm. with what i do and what i know about palo um but if you're talking about tribal you know religions then i would guess you're probably right because i think that they come from an earlier part of humanity where we all sort of have those natural rhythms you mm -hmm. know it's a cycle mm -hmm. so it's going to be fertility mother and father um the choctaw indians i don't know a lot about them but they're the indians of the native americans of new orleans and i just a few years ago discovered that two of their primary gods for lack of a better word, is a moon goddess and a sun god to her brother and sister. And they chase each other throughout the sky. Sound familiar? You know, um, yeah, I mean, you get that. But I mean, there are, my point is there are practices. Um, I don't know all of them. Like I don't, you know, some of what goes on in Cuba, I don't know. But there are practices labeled witchcraft that do not have anything to do with what we do at all. No, definitely not, because if I was in Cuba, oh, I was actually... In a religious in sense. Cuba, yeah, I would I would be maybe, I would be definitely Santero, or Palo Mayombi, or Palo Monte. So that would, that would be totally different type of um, praxis itself. So not necessarily, that's African di diaspora. So not necessarily would be English or derivative from, you know, British traditional. So, right. so in, the, yes. in the religious sense, in the religious sense, yes. But if you're thinking yeah. of the word, right. if you're thinking of, you know, ling, linguistics, I can't get out. I can't even, I can't even speak the word linguistics, but, um, you know, in that way, we use the word witchcraft is put on anything that is outside of Christianity. Anything, it doesn't matter what you do. Although what they do is witchcraft too. My, but... my, my parents, I grew up with, I grew up with mystics in, in my household. So the word witchcraft was very, not rarely used, but it was more mystics or occult science. Mm -hmm. And this is something that they identified with, the occult sciences. They were Masons. They were part of the order mm -hmm. of the, the Eastern Star. I so don't think pre-Christian witches were called witches. I don't. You know, I think pre-Christian witches were called other and things. And we, we were Catholics. You know, I went through the whole communion and, and confirmation and everything on a, on a so, you know, society basis, on a, on a social facade. But at home, we were free thinkers. My parents and my grandparents were very much uh, broad-minded. They were f true free thinkers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in itself. So that's why I grew up with the reverence towards the goddess and my passion oh, that's, towards that's female so divinity. That's I'm trying to say that one of my, you know, uh, one of my mission statements in my education is obviously like saying those definitions, like what he's talking about, the anthropological definition that, that is, you know, the dictionary or whatever. And then you'll have the, you know, the Christian definition of what, what witches were doing, which is all in a European context because nobody was being persecuted by them outside of Europe at the time. Um, and then, of course, 
the definition that began the modern movement in the 1930s to the 1950s was Gerald Gardner. You know, so depending on what definition you're using, I don't think most modern, modern practitioners realize they do fall under one of those three. There isn't any other. So to me personally, yes, witchcraft is a religion with its own identity. So no, I don't, I don't consider other religions to be the same as me, other than that we're religions. However, if we're having an anthropological conversation, you know, and we're saying, okay, that, that African um, guy in the hut is, you know, making an herbal spell to cure somebody of some illness. And the guy from England said that was witchcraft because that's what they would have said mm -hmm. because he was mm -hmm. from England. And, you know, because witchcraft was from because England, they identified they with were describing in their words uh, what this other thing was. The man in the hut would have never called it witchcraft because he didn't speak English. So no, we, there was right. the language and those people that created that thing, not the guy in the hut. Now, no. my argument uh, where I brought up Cuba was that there are some people that that happened for so long and they began speaking English that some did adopt the word for themselves. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, if you run across that, you have to realize that's got its own merit, I think. Um, I really haven't, anyone that I believed anyway, but... Um, no, I, I'm, I'm Cuban-born, and I could say but, that... But is that, that elevating... The identification of that praxis, that is solely, you know, saying, oh, brujo o bruja you know, identifying with a male practitioner or a female practitioner, which is not Christianity. That's all yeah. it was. Right, yeah. right. But, okay, so now let's add in the fact, is that the evolution of what we practice? And do we accept it at some point? Do we stop? Do we educate? Do we keep no, going? No, we do you educate. Know, like... That's why, hence the show. Right, but right. But what I'm saying is that I'm, I'm Cuban-born, I came as an immigrant to this country as, in 16 months years of, uh, of age with my mom because my father was left behind because he had to serve military time in Cuba due to the communist doctrine at, at that time and, and to this day. And so I'm here, you know, professing of the goddess. I'm professing female divinity. Why? Because it's, in, it's innate within my being. With in, in my soul, so I'm not I I'm not derivative from British traditional. I, obviously, I'm Latin. So, but I, I I grew up with the Euro, You know, I grew up. I'm not Afro-Cuban. I have European descent. Not all you know Caribbean people are. Of African, it, there is European, right. obviously. So throughout all of you know Caribbean and Central and South American, so you have to understand that I I was led into the ATRs by a spiritual force, a spiritual guide. I was led into. I was brought into uh, Freemasonry. Uh, this was something that was so innate and, and so natural. You know, the occult sciences, as my parents would profess, you know, this is something that, that is individual. This is pertaining to my own life and my evolution. So, so yeah, witchcraft encompasses so much globally. But when you say the term witchcraft, yes, it is... English. It it pertains to the the the, the British Isles. Well, and since I, the 1950s, it's been a religion. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it was before then as that, but you know, because I don't think I think pre-Christian witchcraft wasn't called witchcraft. I think it was called. <laughs> and here and here in the United States, it, thanks to Selena Fox, in yeah. 1985, it, it is now about federally me. recognized as. A religion. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, who knows? A hundred years from now, it could be called something else. That was actually originally Raymond Buckland. That uh, all Selena Fox had to do with was getting that headstone, and uh, it was actually the gentleman's wife 
that really did it. Selena Fox just was the pagan representative supporting it, her organization. Yeah. Her so and, and Liber Liberty, yeah. it's Lady Liberty League at the time. Um, in Circle that was back in the 90s, yeah, in Circle Sanctuary. But right. that was uh, at the uh, time uh, that... Uh, <laughs> Raymond Buckland actually did the work in the uh, 70s to get the, um, which has been taken out now, unfortunately. But I will get to everybody chatting uh, in the chat too. I do apologize, but you know, I kind of get distracted. So you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, things in there. So no, finish your comments and uh, and then I'll, I'll no, kind of go into. It. No, it's uh, basically, um, uh, Raymond Buckland got the chaplain witchcraft put in the military chaplain's guide in the 1970s, which is really what started us being accepted as religion. It's been taken out now. I've heard. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, so we're let's see. Uh, I do. I do know that. I do know that uh, Selena Fox was instrumental. You know, uh, making it a federally recognized religion with I labor. Think you know, and you know that. That's right. But I in think she got the. Yeah. The pentagram put on the headstone. She was yeah, behind she that. Was, she was also instrumental for a military uh, wife that was fighting for her husband, her dead husband's yeah. rights. And she was instrumental with Lady Liberty League that mm -hmm. she owns. Yes, but she didn't get the religion accepted because there were already witchcraft churches that were legally recognized long before. Oh, so. I, I, I talk about um, Yvonne and Gavin Frost that yes. had the Church of Wicca back in the 60s. Okay. It was a nice religion then. Yes. Oh, I, I, I know that for a fact. <laughs> it was recognized, but I mean, uh, constitutionally, you know, constitutionally, was it, was it le it is said that it was in, it's actually federally recognized back in 85 so i i, I really I, I i really want to get to these uh, <laughs> go ahead go so ahead, go ahead. um so. david who we got to experience um some amazing workshops with during uh witch fest and me and him really connected on the shamanism yeah. part um, and yeah. he was actually part of uh, Philadelphia Pagan Pride today, uh, which is still going on, about. still going on. And uh, he he kind of says, you know, maybe the word means something different in certain cultures um, in his tradition, which is Mongolian traditional shamanism, not what we consider shamanism, which is a trigger word for me, um, where gods, gods mean elevated spirits. They are all spirits, which I can agree with. They are all a spiritual entity or a spiritual uh, essence uh, of an all or an all-powerful, however you want to put that. Um, uh, but they're at a higher class and a more accessible to everyone, which I kind of don't agree with, but agree with. Um, so any female spirit that is widely worshipped is a goddess by default. That I can definitely agree with. Um, it's taking Mary, you know, being a um, the evolution of a goddess being put into a more predominant position, it still has the same essence. It still has the same energy oh, of balance. I, to you and I, Mary's a goddess, right? Yes. But to Kathy, she's not. And their opinion matters more than us because it's their thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's like, All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. All right. So hopefully, so we're all gonna look. That's you and I looking at Catholicism through our lens. To us, she's a goddess, but she's not to Catholics. So. <laughs> all right. Well, all she's right. not to Catholic, but to yes, for you and I, she's yes, my she first goddess. She is the goddess. Yes, yes so no, exactly. She's the mother, exactly. actually the Mother Earth. To me, uh, she's personified, right. you know, na Mother Nature. Well, when I when I do certain classes, um, and I just had this conversation the other day with someone who was asking me questions about things, um, I have them dedicate an altar to Mary, just to break those um, 
you know, barriers between that and be able to understand the essence and the um, energies and frequencies, whatever you want to call them, uh, to the goddess that, you know, for, and I, I always say it, you know, it's a name and a face that we put to those energies that are connected, uh, the balance that's in the universe, that balance of male and female within the all. Um, and it doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it Mary, you can call it Hecate, you can call it Aphrodite. They have different aspects, of course, and different things. But, you know, you can call it Shama Lama Ding Dong. It, it doesn't matter. It's how you connect to it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. I do. To the movie The Mist of Avalon, when at the end they portray Mary as the salvation yes. of, you know, the goddess of female divinity yeah. Yeah. that is left. Well, Mary, literally, in my opinion, is a combination of the goddess Isis and the goddess Diana and other goddesses uh, Correct. create a Christian context. Yeah. Right. No, I, I agree. So, I, mean, um, I believe it's nice Nan. Letters. Horus with the same letters. <laughs> yeah. I believe it's uh, Nan. Um, she says, I am not a religion. I am female. I am a witch. I am in high priestess of the craft. Um, the, and she also says, the goddess will surpass our debate, which is definitely true. Um masonry and other mystical applications the oviates and the bards it's like broken up into multiple different things uh being 72 initiated by a queen over 35 years <laughs> nan if you can if you can explain all of that in a little bit more detail we can kind of put it together because it's all over the place um of what you mean and where you're kind of going with that that might help and we can kind of talk to that uh talk about that what I usually say, and I'll just sum up this because I don't quite understand what, she, but I think I kind of understand. Someone can call themselves the queen of the purple fairies. You know, I don't care. That doesn't mean I'm going to join them in believing it. You know, so uh, I have no idea who this person is or if they're initiated or not initiated. I would say to be a high priestess, you have to be uh, the leader of a priesthood. Um, and... Uh, you know, if you're a priestess, that sort of denotes religion. Priesthoods are not non-religious by any definition. Priesthoods belong to religions. Yeah. I've never heard of a non-religious priest or priestess. So I think you need to uh, maybe read more. So it behooves you to read. <laughs> know your words. Sorry. Well, she wouldn't believe you either. <laughs> that was the comment. Um, I, I, again, I'm I'm a little lost on on where she was kind of going with that. Um, and the great thing, she doesn't need to believe me. The only people that need to believe me are the people stepping in circle with me. Right. Well, I, I, see, and I think that's what that's what makes the difference between initiatory, and this is my definitions of contemporary witchcraft, initiatory witchcraft, and, and traditional witchcraft. witchcraft. The Special Olympics these days, and you know that's the problem I have. You know, is it's uh, you know, it's this sort of idea that um, you know, me and Levi are very direct and honest with our guests on on our show. I'm sorry if you guys if that's. Uh, not your way of normally doing it, but I, I suspect Alexander knew what he was getting himself into. That's too fine now. No, uh, yeah, you don't always understand what somebody's saying in written communication, but you can some sort of glean it, and I'm not seeing it. Uh, and she could be a priestess in something else, I don't know. Um, but, you know, when you're defining that, regardless, if a Cabot witch comes up to me, you know, and says, I'm a priest of witchcraft, you know, or I'm a priestess of witchcraft, uh, it's not going to mean the same thing to me it does to them. Likewise, I think if a, if a guard, well, Cabots are a little bit different, but if a gardenarian, and I do understand this, so I don't know if it's the best example, but I know it's one we can kind of talk about. If a gardenarian walked up to a Cabot circle and like was like, you're all doing it wrong, I, Lori would probably give them the look of death 
and it would be over, you know, because it's her space, her circle, mm -hmm, her, mm -hmm. her way of things. Um, so Gardnerians don't have any right to say anything about it, you know, likewise, vice versa. So, you know, when someone pronounces themselves, well, I'm a priest of witchcraft, uh, to whom? because that only belongs in the community context or in the historical context that it exists. Like we can't change that, right? So um, for instance, being an Alexandrian high priest, many, many Gardinarians will consider me valid. Some won't. You know, it's the right way that it is. You know? so, so Nan gave a little bit more explanation. Um, I just want to kind of chime in. Uh, Randy, thanks for joining us because she, I actually talked about you on the show about two seconds ago. I didn't use your name. But um, uh, Nan says, Sisterhood and Brotherhood of Wicca. Please understand my queen was Lady Cersei. Uh, I think. Uh, I'm aware of that line. I am. Uh, I have a member of my coven who was once a part of that line before he became Alexandrian. I am, you know, I agree with Brian wholeheartedly when he actually says about the initiatory rights, and this is something that is part of the communal energies that we tap into. It's about it's about humanity. It's about unity, um, bringing the force, bringing that magic together. Uh, that's the real reason about it you know creating the well, community I think pe people get upset because initiatory witchcraft and i'm using my definitions initiatory witchcraft and this whole modern take on gatekeeping and things like that um it hurts people's feelings i think that's really what it comes down to is people get hurt by that you know but no but people people should find the balance because when when i started when i started venturing into salem and becoming a cabot, I did not bring my, you know, experience or my rights as a high priest. I was very quiet. I was subdued. I, I didn't need to elaborate who I was. I was there to honor Lori, her tradition, and uh, receive her tutelage. And that's what I did. I grew within 10 years to become a high priest. I think that goes back to education, though. It goes back to education. This, I did not need to, pro, you know, proclaim that I was a high priest already. And I was, and I come from Gardnerian, New York, Wicca, but, Welsh. But, but people I I need to feel... I never said a word. I went there. I agree. No, I, I agree her. with you. But people Mentorship. need to feel special. People well, need to feel special. Thing. You know, um, we're all special in the sense that we're all unique creatures of the divine. You know, we're all children of the goddess. And at the same time, none of us are special. <laughs> you know, we're all you know, we're that's, finite. That's animals. exactly what I say. No more, no less. So... The reality of it is, is you're only as special as you make yourself. When we're talking about witchcraft, let's put on our big grown-up pants now. So when we're talking about witchcraft, um, you know, um, emotions are great. Emotions can be a strong catalyst of power. But we're talking about people who, um, well, from my periphery, people who are on the path of initiation, who are in a priesthood, who are going to go through rigorous occult training, and who are attempting to wield power. But outside of my definition, I think anyone who's going along with the word witch is proclaiming that they want to wield power. Um, emotional insecurity is not a vehicle for power. It just simply is not. And if you um, are looking for um, emotional crutches, emotional reassurance, or a community that is gonna make you feel good about yourself, and slather you with compliments, it is not witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft is not, you know, uh, that's not, you know, and especially if you're going to get into the, the hardcore stuff, you know, we're not counseling covens, we're not Tupperware parties. Um, it's hard, 
most of us who are involved in witchcraft are usually of the liberal persuasion, not always, but usually of the liberal persuasion, and socially um, conscious. So there's a bit of compassion that goes along with it. For instance, um, there are a lot of people I'd be friends with who I would spend a lot of trying trying to help, but I wouldn't want them in my circle. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. um, there's a certain caliber of person for that. I think it's natural for the very young uh, and the new new practitioners to be looking for reinsurance and to be insecure, um, and they probably should be. You know, I think you should be a bit vulnerable and insecure uh, if you're pure. But there comes a point when you have to realize that you know whatever you're signing up for is what you're signing up for. It's the contract that you're signing with the devil, quote unquote. Um, that's between you and the powers that be and the people involved with your workings. You know, the rest of the world or the rest of the craft does not owe you anything, uh, nor are they involved. You know, I didn't sign off on half these people and I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. I'm not working with them. You know, my job in the public is to educate and that's it. And some people are going to agree with me. Some people are going to disagree. Some people may change their mind. If anything, I can get people to, I don't know, use Google. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Now, you'll get real history, you know, um, not just somebody's opinion. Stay off of all the pagan blog sites and all that. That's just people regurgitating the same information over and over again. It's not education. Yeah. You know, if you I I fight myself every day, I fight myself every day because I'm in the rooms and I do these things and it's for promotional purposes, you know, not to really contribute. And sometimes I do, but you know, I fight myself every day because I see these things and I'm like, you know, like I want to sit there and yes, it's my purpose i guess you can say with the education and things like that but there has to be a fine line because you you're just talking out your you know your big toe at that point uh to a lot of these you know to a lot of these people there um where we've been on our journey and you know i am thankful that in my younger years i did not i didn't get online i didn't have online you know didn't really exist much um and I was a late bloomer on getting online. I'm thankful for that, <laughs> you know, because it does change the game quite a bit. You know, um, it, it's got a lot of blessings to it and things I'm very thankful for, but it has a lot of banes too. You know, I am not from this generation so, as well. I'm, I'm, I'm middle-aged so man then... and on this podcast, you know, <laughs> professing on witchcraft. So. Yes, definitely. It's not my generation. It's those that are coming in and trying to learn. And I hope that we will able to guide them. Inspire, you know, if anything. The the baby witches. The baby witches of TikTok. Um, So I do have have to put it out that I think um, it was kind of misread uh, with Nan's thing. She seems to be agreeing with Brian and us as well. So, um, you know, just by what she's kind of saying in that, with that. So if it came off in that way, so Nan, I, I understand I, I, a little bit better. I, I, Again, it goes into, you know, uh, how, how we write things. I no, I know. I know. My, my, I know. my points still stand, you know. Uh, it's it is what it is. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a legit person or or not a legit person. Whatever that means to each person, you know. The point of it is, is that she could be she could be like the queen of the Gardnerians. That doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what I'm doing because right. I don't believe right. in a queen of the Gardnerians. <laughs> you know, it's just, it is what it is. So I'm Alexandrian. I'm a heretical Gardnerian. <laughs> I'm a heretical <laughs> Gardnerian, like Alex. Yeah, we're we're really we're getting close to being a a, you know kind of over. But she kind of retracted on it uh, in in a way. She's like, um, you know, why do they say my queen and HPS? Um, And it comes down to how she learned in in an older generation. And I think that's exactly where we are. And and talking about this on how generational kind of sees different things. You know, if you look at of the old uh, Long Island line, you know, that's beginning to change from the older generation 
Um, you know, everything seems to, it, it is evolving. It is, you know, going forward and the words that we use and we're a little bit more careful and we're a little bit more of this and we're a little bit more of that, not so much on hurting people's feelings, but to be clear in what we're trying to say. And I think that's a perfect example of, of, of all of that is, you know, words. And that seems to be the theme that we kind of talked about tonight was about, words you know words and what witchcraft and means and what what this is and, and three people from different countries here acting as diplomats with a bunch of viewers right, right? <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. underneath the surface of it all what i'd have to say to anyone is that underneath the surface of all there are these witchcraft cultures and communities that live that are not they're not on facebook they're not being published in books. They're not, if you're not in those communities, you, they're invisible to you. The same communities that started in, bubbling in the 30s, that went on in the 50s, Alex was practicing in the 50s. I have people in my life who were in his original coven. You know, his wife is in my life. You know, Maxine, the co-founder of the tradition. These communities didn't go away that way of living and the things that built up around them, just like Cabot Society in Salem. It's a culture unto itself, and it's not something you're involved in if you're not involved in it, but it exists. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. <laughs> Any more um, comments about that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to kind of, uh, kind of leave that one cause we're getting close. We're actually way, we're three minutes over what we're supposed to do. So at, at that, we're just going to leave it as, you know, um, I think it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a good time. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Sorry too controversial but, no um, you know you know what no. it, it's a it's, for us it's about education whether it, that comes from controversy whether or not it comes whatever but education comes from truth and i think truth eventually will prevail and get us closer all to being understanding how we view the goddess and, and i think that's what's really important i think that's that's what we try to do on the show and hopefully we do that whether it's controversy whether it's not whether if you agree with me or if you agree with alex or you agree with brian it doesn't matter take what you will and um but look into what we say too because you know who knows we could be talking out of our big toe too <laughs> <laughs> All three of them exactly. represent female divinity. Yeah, and that's the basis exactly. of this show. Shamalama and, Ding Dong. Yes. And <laughs> and tomorrow, Sunday, is World Goddess Day. And so we... Well, so we, then we did our job for tomorrow. Yes. Well, you, still got, you still got more to do. I don't. I got to go I have store. more to do tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> but we all three represent female divinity and we profess it. And that's... And that's the beauty of it, that, that we come together for this, to educate and to have this educational show for, for others. Agreed. Agreed. Well, Brian, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, please, uh, on the uh, This Old Witch page, uh, put whatever you can for promoting yourself, this and that. I'll grab things and throw it up there for the listeners and all of that. And, um, Thank you, Brian. And if you're Thank around, you. if you're around later, we can you. continue our conversation off the air. <laughs> All right, man. Until next Gotta time. Be with you all. you Absolutely. as well. Blessed, Blessed be. be. All right, so that was a good show. I I, I really enjoyed that. That was sensational. Yes. That actually helped. Those that are seeking, those are that need some answers. I think that um, bringing three practitioners here in America together, that's uh, something that is uh, formidable for, for um, substance, mm -hmm. like you always say. Yep. 
Yep, and yeah, and it's it's really about you know education, and that's what it comes down to, you know wh- whether or not you know whether or not it's the newer generation or the older generation. We all have different names, we all have different things. I hope that's hitting some of those comments that just came in. Um, you know, we have different names, we have different things for this. Um, you know, and things progress. We we kind of we kind of have to accept it. We can educate. Um, you know, and some things we have to leave behind, you know, there are older practices or older words and older things that we do need to leave behind because, you know, it, we've progressed as society and, and that's just what the way it is, just the way it is. Um, so we are running over, but it, it, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I don't really don't have any kind of announcements. Um, I don't know if you got anything going on. Um, there's not much going on. What are we in? Uh, I don't even know what we're in right now. Everything's kind of jumbled together. Um, so there's not really much announcements, although we do have our guest for next week already. We do. Yes. So we can announce that. That'll be our big announcement. Um, uh, other than our normal, um, please support us on Patreon. Um, if you are interested in advertising, it's showing up right down there, right below. Uh, contact us there. You can watch us on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and we are also live on Spreaker. And you can find us on every platform, everywhere that you can find platforms or podcasts. Um, but other than that, I have no other announcements, but please announce our guest for next week. It is the or two wonderful weeks. Two weeks. author, uh, Evo Dominguez. So he will be here with us uh, next time, and, and I'm really happy to have him. He's a fellow native Cuban. <laughs> yeah. That so is going to be awesome. That is actually going to be wonderful to actually share his wisdom and his light among everyone. Yes. So I want to I want to say tomorrow is World Goddess Day, which is a virtual tradition that was created by Claudine Prieto of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And this is a we started this Lady Rhea and I started this way back in 2015 when it first began. And now tomorrow we'll gather and I'll have it recorded to share with everyone else. So where can um, they where can they find it? This is going to be on my YouTube. I'm posting it on my YouTube, Alexander Cabot. So uh, let the light of the goddess shine through us all. May may it bring us health overall prosperity and love so mode it be so mode it be and at that this old witch is out and we'll see you guys in two weeks have a good night bye now